Hi there, in today's video I'll be sharing a bit about how medicine at Oxford is like, or how it was like for us this first year. So first I'll start off with the syllabus or the course structure. In the first year, our medicine course is split into three big subjects, organisation of the body, physiology and pharmacology, and biochemistry and medical genetics. So these are the three most important subjects. And then we have two smaller or additional subjects, which is medical sociology and medical statistics. We also have a kind of clinical or practical component, which is the patient and doctor course. That is basically being attached to a GP or a GP surgery near your college. So I start off with organization of the body, which we call OB. It's basically a fancy term for anatomy and embryology. We learn about all the different parts of the body, all the different systems of the body, all the names of the parts, and it's just a huge amount to memorize. For Phys and Pharm is quite self-explanatory, it's a lot about physiology, a lot about drugs, basically how the processes are working in your body. In our first year, some of the most important topics for Phys and Pharm were nerve and muscle, cardiovascular physiology, respiratory physiology, renal physiology, and gastrointestinal physiology. And lastly, we have biochemistry and medical genetics. For most people, this is the easiest subject. It's mostly an extension from your A-levels. Think about gene expression, DNA, stuff like that. So we have cellular metabolism and we also have molecular and medical genetics. In terms of the amount of content, medical sociology is taught only over one term and medical statistics as well. And that is why they are so-called smaller subjects and they have much smaller weightage. For us this year, those two subjects were done by coursework assignments instead of actual examinations. For medical statistics, you will be able to apply a bit of knowledge from your A-level maths. There will only be a few statistics questions in the part A's, which are multiple choice questions, so you don't really have to specifically study for it. Whereas for medical sociology, usually there will be an exam with three essays that we need to write, but this year that exam was turned into kind of a coursework assignment, so we had a few days to do it instead of just two hours. And I will talk a bit more about exams later. Which subject you find the hardest tends to vary from person to person. For me, I initially found OB the hardest because of the new vocabulary and the sheer amount of content that we had to stuff into our brains. It was just very overwhelming. And I also couldn't really get embryology into my head because it was a bit abstract. Like, you needed a bit of imagination. You needed to look at diagrams and videos to be able to understand how the body plan changes. Whereas later on, more so during revision and towards the later part of the course, I found that Phys and Farm was harder because you had to really understand instead of just memorizing. For OB, if you can't understand, you can just memorize as much as you can. Whereas for Phys and Farm, you actually have to really understand the processes, why they happen and how different components interact to be able to apply it to different essay questions. Now, moving on to a typical week in the life of a first year Oxford medic. Basically, there are a few things that you will have to do every week. They are lectures, practicals, tutorials, and essays, as well as some other independent work. So I'll start with lectures, about an hour long usually, but it can vary, so it can be shorter or longer than that, depending on the lecturer. We had lectures that were three hours long, whereas some were just 30 minutes. So it really depends on the topic and the lecturer. Usually we will go, we will all go to the MSTC, the Medical Sciences Teaching Centre, and we'll all go into the same lecture theatre and everyone will sit there and the lecture will be delivered. But this year, because of the pandemic, we were doing it from our rooms every day. So we will just sit in front of our laptops or our devices and we'll play the recorded lectures. But some of them were live streamed and a few of them we got to go and attend them live. But only a few people could sign up for each one because of social distancing rules. And then we have practicals, which I can't really tell you much about because I've attended so few actual real practicals. I think in a usual year they will be able to go into the dissection room and they will be able to do a lot more anatomy practicals that really help you to learn anatomy. For us this year, unfortunately, no, we didn't get the experience. I've never seen the specimens in real life. We did have a few recordings from the DR being uploaded for us and it's just someone pointing to the different structures, which was kind of helpful to be honest but we didn't really get to go into the room ourselves. We have never been there. And besides that, other practicals could be dealing with cells and histology, microscopy, or some biomolecules and enzymes assays. Those are the kinds of stuff that we do in first year. There isn't really that much complicated stuff in the first year. 
I think because we haven't really learned that much or we haven't really learned enough to be able to do a lot of practical or clinical work. So even if we were to go to the hospital now, we wouldn't be able to do anything that practical or that clinical, given that we only just learned the basic theory. So the kind of experiments that we do are more of like proof of concepts or a simplified version of something that we've learned about. So it was really bad because we had to do a lot of practicals online and for us it's just really boring and it's also ineffective and if we have any questions we can't discuss it as much as we would have been able to in an actual in-person practical where you can just ask the instructor for help if you need it and you get it immediately. When we're doing it online we don't really have that immediate feedback and we don't really have that interaction and we don't really have that hands-on experience so I would say that our practical experience has been very limited. But I think in a normal year you will get a few more interesting practicals. As for tutorials, usually we have about two or three tutorials a week. There are a few weeks when we only have one, depending on the schedule of our tutors, because they are really, really busy people. Some of them work as researchers or clinicians and they have hospital work to do, so they are literally balancing different jobs at once. And so it's sometimes really hard for them to make extra time for us. And therefore it tends to change from week to week how many tutorials we have, depending on their availability. So what exactly are tutorials? Tutorials are basically sessions where we go through a particular topic or we go through some essay question that our tutor has set us beforehand. This depends on a lot on your tutor. So different tutors have different styles, different tutors have different ways of conducting their tutorials. For our tutors, one of them does set us essays and we will usually discuss the essay at our tutorial, whereas another tutor will ask us questions in turn and it's really stressful. And our last tutor will make it more like a discussion so anyone can answer and it's more relaxed. Moving on to essays. Essays is something that's so unique to Oxford. It's something that Oxford students struggle with. It's just a love-hate relationship, I feel. You may think that it's really weird to have to write essays for medicine, which is such a scientific subject, but it actually really helps us to learn because it means that we have to do research, we have to compile information from different sources, and we have to search for stuff that will make our essay more interesting or make our essay stand out. And in the process of that, we're actually learning a lot more than we would have just from the lectures. So it really helps us to go deeper into the topics. Personally, I tend to spend hours writing a single essay because the research and reading part just takes up so much time. The reading and understanding before you can put it into a coherent essay that flows, it just takes so much time. It could be over a few days, several hours, or I could spend an entire day just writing an essay and not finishing it. Of course, this tends to vary for different people. Some people, if they are less of a perfectionist or if they are more efficient, they can get it done much faster, maybe within a few hours. But the topics that we get can be really interesting. I will put some examples um, maybe on the screen for you guys to see, but I won't read them out. And it's just quite interesting, I think, the kind of questions that they ask and the kind of answers that you can give. Although some of them are really, really factual and really scientific, but there are different ways that you can organize information or when they ask you an essay question, you're actually forced to learn the entire topic again, you're actually forced to find out more information as well because for us we are expected to, for example, draw diagrams, we're expected to include experimental evidence and clinical relevance to gain bonus marks in the exams, so we have to kind of try to extend beyond the core syllabus. Lastly, there's also an aspect of independent work and constant revision because you can't just rely on lectures, you can't just rely on tutorials to get you through. In fact, our tutorials don't even cover all of the topics because there are just not enough tutorials and there are too many topics. So we won't be able to go through everything in the tutorials. We have to spend a lot of time on our own, organizing our own notes, going back and reviewing the stuff that we've learned in order to be prepared for exams and in order to make sure that the information is well retained. There's really a lot that I learned this year and a lot that a lot of mistakes I made along the way, a lot of things that I did wrongly because I didn't know how to study or I didn't know how to revise. I didn't know how to plan my time when working independently. So this is perhaps something that I will share in another video. As for exams, we only have one set of graded real exams at the end of the academic year, which is in June, which we've kind of just finished. But before that, we have collections or exams which are at the start of every term. Basically, this means that you have to study during your Christmas and Easter vacations. 
and then afterwards you will take your exam before starting the new term which I feel is really stressful because it means you can't fully enjoy your vacation you can't really be fully carefree until summer but it's also good in a way because it kind of forces us to not forget what we've learned during the term it forces us to go back and revisit what we've learned during the term especially because Oxford's terms are so short you will never be able to learn everything properly during term time so holidays are a time for us to kind of consolidate for us to make sure that that we actually learned it well and these collections are not graded they don't count towards your final grade so they are more like checkpoints for you to check your own progress for you to make sure that you're on the right track and they are shorter than the real exams so we only have three essays in two hours we only have one essay for each subject and the multiple choice questions will have about 60 for each subject that will be departmental which means it'll be the same across the entire medical school whereas the essay questions will be by your college so your college tutors will set the essay questions as for the final real exams at the end of the year it does count towards a small portion of your final degree so in our first year exams we have part a's and part b's for each of the three big subjects so for part a's it's basically multiple choice questions 100 questions in 75 minutes and most of us did it invigilated so it would just be on the computer and you just have to do it like a multiple choice exam the part b's are usually the harder part because they are the essays so we have three essays for each paper and you have to write three essays within two hours which is really a lot to ask i feel i mean usually when we're writing tutorial essays of course we spend way longer than that because we have to do research we have to compile we have to reword and everything but in the exam you should all be in your head and you have to do three essays within two hours i still feel like we really don't have enough time this year we were doing it online open book and we had 30 minutes of technical time but i still felt really rushed during the exam so just to wrap up, I feel like first year medicine at Oxford has been really challenging for me because I really had to adapt to a new way of learning, to a new way of working and to planning my own time and learning to work independently and learning to find different resources, learning to grasp new concepts more quickly, learning to stuff huge volumes of information into my brain within a short time. That was just some of the things that characterised first year medicine at Oxford. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, remember to give it a thumbs up and also watch my other videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!